welcome back everyone. I really hope you're all doing well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Hannah, also known as Tropical Plant Addict. And today we are going to be creating a soil cocktail. So this is my own personal soil mix that I use for the majority of my plants. Although I do alter the soil mix slightly depending on which kind of plants I'm potting up. But this is my general soil mix that I pretty much use for all my houseplants. I also wanted to mention that I'm still getting over a cold, so if my voice sounds a bit funny, that's why. I'm not really feeling my best today, but I really wanted to film and I've been really excited to make this video. So let's begin. And I also wanted to take this opportunity today to repot one of my beautiful plants, my gorgeous Monstera here. It's looking a little bit root bound. So ideally I'm looking to create a really nice, airy, chunky, well draining soil mix that holds on to moisture, but not too much moisture. So I'm going to be adding in a few different things into my soil mix. Obviously, if you don't have these things at home, you can kind of substitute them for something else, but I'll go through that with you when I'm making it. And I actually already made some of this soil cocktail uh, a couple of weeks ago because I was putting up some of my caladiums. So I do have a bowl of it here in front of me, but I'm going to go through each ingredient and then let you know a little bit about why I'm adding that ingredient into the soil mix. I always get asked what soil I use for all my plants. So this is a highly requested video that I have been meaning to film for quite some time. So I'm really glad that I have gotten around to filming it and I hope you enjoy it. So my preferred potting mix is made up of a few different things. I've got a little list here. So the first thing being coir or coir compost, however you pronounce that. We've got coir chips or orchid bark perlite, activated charcoal, and hydro drain, which is like little clay pebbles. But I will go through each ingredient with you and tell you why I add these into my soil mix. So first up we have the coir or coir compost, which is a nice eco-friendly, lightweight and peat-free substrate that's actually made from coconut husk fibers. It's also biodegradable and it does actually break down a lot slower than normal potting soil, which is really good. You can actually buy it loose in a bag or you can buy it as a compressed brick that expands in water. So if you don't have the room to store a big bag of it in your cupboard or your shed, then I would recommend just getting the compressed brick because it doesn't take up much room. And then all you need to do is put some in a bucket and add some water and then it expands. So what I really like about this compost is that it holds water, but it also lets excess water drain away. So you're not gonna get any water logging, which can lead to root rot. So unlike your general kind of potting soil that you would probably buy as a pre-made potting soil in the garden centers, this stuff is really well draining and just a lot more light and airy than normal potting soil. I just find that the normal potting soil is very kind of soggy and very dense and it holds way too much water which means you'll get kind of a soggy media and that can lead to root rot. So this is a great base for mixing up your own compost. So this is the first ingredient. So to make your compost into a nice well draining and chunky mix first we'll be adding some perlite. If you don't like using perlite you can use pumice as a substitute. And I think you can actually get bags of pumice from Ikea, I believe. I know some people don't really like perlite and it does have the tendency to kind of float to the top of the soil over time. So it can look a little bit unsightly. When you're pouring your perlite into your soil mixture, be really careful of all the dust. I usually actually do this outside because it does create quite a lot of dust. Maybe wear a mask or something. Just try not to breathe it in. So perlite is a natural, pH neutral, sterile growing medium that's actually derived from volcanic rock. So basically when it's mixed with compost, it holds water and nutrients producing a healthier growing media as well as improving drainage and retaining oxygen in the soil. So it's a really useful ingredient to add into your soil. If you do find it a little bit unsightly, you can actually dress the top of your soil with something to kind of hide it. You can use something like pumice because as well as looking quite nice, it also deters insects apparently. I haven't personally tried this myself as the perlite doesn't really bother me and I do repot my plants quite often, so I don't really mind it. So the next ingredient I like to add into my soil mix is either orchid bark or coir or coir chips. 
So as well as providing kind of aeration and drainage, these are also gonna kind of suck in some of the moisture. So they will actually improve the aeration and structure of the soil. So the chips will basically absorb some of the moisture and then slowly release it over time back into your soil mix. So they are a really nice addition to add to your soil cocktail. So I tend not to kind of measure out how much of each um, ingredient I'm kind of putting into my soil. I'll just kind of tip it all in a bowl, mix it together until I'm happy with it. Obviously, depending on what kind of plants you are repotting will depend on how much of each ingredient you add. But I will put a rough guide in the description box for you just to give you a general idea of how much of each um, ingredient I use for my soil. So far, I've gone through the three main ingredients of my soil mix, which is the coir compost, the perlite, and then the orchid bark or the coir coir chips. Um, and then also I like to add in a tiny bit of activated charcoal. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but after learning a little bit about terrariums over the past year, I've started adding in a little bit of activated charcoal into my potting mix. And the reason for this is because it actually absorbs toxins from the soil. I have also heard that it can absorb nutrients, but apparently it will release the nutrients back into the soil over time, which is actually really good for your plants. Activated charcoal is very porous, so it will absorb any excess water and this will obviously avoid things like root rot and soggy soil. One thing to note is that the activated charcoal is completely different to your normal kind of barbecue charcoal, which you really want to avoid putting in your soil. I have read that this is actually quite toxic for your plants, so please don't use barbecue charcoal in your plants. Activated charcoal is produced at a much higher temperature and it's much more porous than your bog standard charcoal. I've read quite a lot of contradicting things about adding charcoal into your soil mix, but it's commonly used in soil mixes for terrariums, but obviously it's personal preference whether you'd like to add this into your soil cocktail. The last ingredient on my list, again, this is completely optional. I just decided to start adding this into my soil mix around a year ago after I learned some more about terrariums. But this is a clay substrate that's commonly used in terrariums as a drainage layer but it can be quite useful mixed into your soil. It can actually store water and increase the humidity. So again I just add a sprinkle of these into my soil mix and all my plants seem really happy. So again I just wanted to say this is just my own personal preferred soil mix. You don't have to use this mix, this is just personally what I use. And what keeps my plants happy. You can obviously alter the ratios of ingredients for different types of plants. So I'll generally use this potting mix for the majority of my house plants, including my aroids and my calatheas. This, as it is here, would be perfect for calatheas, but if I was mixing it up for my aroids, I'd probably add a bit more of the orchid bark or the coir, coir chips and probably add a bit more perlite as well. But generally, I'll just use the same soil for all my plants. If you're mixing up something for your succulents, I, I'm not really that experienced with succulents, but I will use roughly the same mix, but I will leave out the orchid bark and then I'll just put in some sand or just add in some cacti potting mix. But this is all I have mixed up from a few weeks ago. I do need to order some more charcoal and chips. So I'm gonna go ahead and repot my Monstera and I'm also going to show you how well draining it is by pouring some water through it. So as you can, just pouring soil all over myself. As you can see, this guy is pretty root bound. I was a bit limited for plastic pots so this one isn't much bigger, but it'll have to do for now until I can get hold of some new plastic pots. Right, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this without making a massive mess. I really didn't think this through. I need to go and get a bowl to pour this soil into, so I'll be right back. What have you all been doing with your time at the moment? I've mainly just been gardening, tending to my plants, filmed a few extra videos and I'd quite like to get back into my art as well which would be really nice as I haven't painted anything for a while. I think the last thing I painted was the tiki bar signs last year. 
Oh no, it wasn't. I um, painted a sign for Zahir at Plants and Paints, um, which said Foliage Fanatic. Yeah, that was the last thing I did. Apparently we're getting a little heat wave this weekend in the UK. When I say heat wave, I mean like heat wave for this time of year anyway. I think it's going to be 17 degrees on Sunday, which is actually really warm for April. I hope you're all keeping safe and you're not too bored. I guess there's always plenty to do around the house and if you've got a garden, there's always something to do in the garden. Now I need to go and get some water, which I completely forgot about. So I'm going to give it a good water now. So as you can see, water drains straight through. So with some mixes, you'll water it and you won't get any water coming out the bottom and that is not what you want. So this is exactly what we want. A nice, well-draining mix. So I'm going to put this guy back in his lovely ceramic pot and he will be going to live in my office. One thing to note is that I always use plastic nursery pots with drainage holes and then I just place these into some ceramic decorative pots. I have no experience at all with terracotta. These have always worked really well for me. I find it like really simple if you need to repot the plant. You just change the nursery pot. I recycle all my pots, I never throw them away. So I've got quite a collection of them in the shed. And also the amount and how often you water your plant will depend on your home environment. I tend to water my plants around once a week in the winter, although a couple of them twice a week, the thirsty ones. Um, and then in the summer around twice a week, but again it will depend on the temperature of the house and how quickly the soil is drying out before I water them again. I just keep an eye on them. Generally I'll try and water them every weekend and then again on a Wednesday in the summer, but I don't always stick to a strict schedule, I'll just water them whenever I can basically. I can't remember why I put this caladium next to me on the sofa, I think it was just for me to show you its progress. So. I planted up my caladium bulbs about two or three weeks ago and this is how it's looking. So they're coming along really nicely. One issue I have is that I don't have any ceramic pots big enough to fit these plastic pots in, which is a bit of a nuisance. And at the moment, home sense is shut, so I can't actually go and get any pots. So they're gonna look very awesome in their nice plastic pots, sat on a saucer or wrapped in um, a plastic bag. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really hope you found the video useful. If I've missed anything out, I'll add it into the description box. I probably have. I'm not quite feeling myself at the moment. As I said, I'm still getting over a cold and I feel a little bit ropey, but I'm trying my best. And as I mentioned, this is just my own personal preferred potting mix. You don't have to add all the ingredients in, but you may want to take some of the ingredients that I've mentioned and make your own mix. And you can also tailor it to suit different plants. But just to give you a general idea of what I'm using, Take care everyone, I really hope you're all doing well and you're keeping busy and if you're bored, go and make yourself a soil cocktail. <laughs> Cheers!